Hello everyone, thank you for joining me once again. So uh, let's talk about doing a PhD in Germany. How do you apply for a PhD? How do you find a position? And how do you get started with a PhD in Germany? Let's go. So the first step to doing a PhD in Germany is to find an open position. So you look for a position that's free and you apply to that position. But how do you find this kind of position? So there are many resources you can use. The first of them is obviously Google. Just Google that stuff, you know. Microbiology PhD in Germany. Enter. Look at the list of schools that come up go through all the links engineering chemical engineering phd in germany enter check it you know the second thing you can do apart from google is to use the website of the german academic exchange service i made a video the last time and i'm going to link the video at the end of this video where i showed us how to apply for msc admissions in germany using the website of the german academic exchange service so if you're going to look for a phd position also you can go back to that website but instead of searching for MSc now, just change your search to PhD. And you're going to bring out PhD in all the fields. Put in your own field and you're good to go. <clears throat> Another source you can use is uh, specialized websites. So there's some websites that are designed for every field, you know. And you get to know this just by interacting with your own field. So for example, I'm in the geosciences. There's a website called Earthworks. If I go to Earthworks, I can find jobs and PhD positions across the world in geosciences, geology, geophysics, and every other thing in geosciences. So you can check if there's a specialized website for your own field and see what positions that they advertise in there. A fourth way to find a PhD position is to talk to your current advisor. Maybe you're in Nigeria now, for example, and you've done your MSc there. Talk to your advisor and say, do they know any researcher in Germany or any researcher who's do, who has a position in Germany that will be willing to take them? And from there, you can apply. So how do you apply to a PhD program in Germany? There are two kinds of PhD positions in Germany. There's a structured PhD position and there's an unstructured PhD position. For the structured position, like the name implies, everything you do is very well structured over the next three or four years of your PhD. Even the application process is well structured. So typically for a structured PhD program, what happens is that you go to the website of the program and there's an application link for everybody to apply. So regardless of your area of interest as long as you're applying to that particular institute you guys use the same portal so you you click on the you, you log into the portal and you fill in some information on the portal and you specify your research interests in a particular box so based on your interests and based on the document you've sent to them like your cv your motivation letter your, your letters of reference they would now go through your application and forward your application to the professors who work in your area of interest so the professors get all the applications from everybody in that that want to work with them and they, they sift through the applications and say, okay, no, we don't want this ones, we want this ones. And if they like you enough, they would send you an email and say, okay, you know what, come for an interview or let's do an interview over Skype. So when you have this interview over Skype, it's your chance to tell them exactly your experience in the field, how much knowledge you have, what exactly you want to do with your PhD, why you want to work with them. So you have to do, you have to do a lot of background research into what they are doing. So once you pass that stage, you typically be given an offer for the PhD. And then you'll be told that you have to start on so-and-so date, although you can still negotiate the start date. So that's for a structured PhD program. If you now want to deal with an unstructured program, for example, I'm doing an unstructured PhD. So you don't apply, you know, on a particular portal to everybody. What you do in an unstructured program is that you reach out to a professor by yourself and say, okay, you send an email to the professor and say, you know, hello, I like your research work and I'm interested in this area. I would like to work with you. On my PhD, do you have funds or are you willing to take on a new student or a new PhD candidate? Then the professor will reply you yes or no. If they tell you yes, they will be like, okay, I have some funding from so and so, you can come and work on this project. So they interview you one on one. And once you're interviewed and they like you, they accept you. And then all the paperwork, like for your visa and every other thing, begins to work, you know, together. So for the unstructured program, you don't have to apply on the portal, you just have to talk to the professor one on one. And you don't have a particular deadline to submit any documents. You also don't have a deadline to start. You can always negotiate start date with your advisor. So between the structured and the unstructured programs, there are advantages and disadvantages as with every other thing, you know. So for a structured program, for example, everything you are doing is well planned. You know that like there's so much attention given to you, especially in the very, very early years of the PhD, like your first year or first one and a half years. So your, your professor would make sure that there are some courses you attend. To give you some background knowledge that you may be lacking you make sure that you or he or she will make sure that you do certain things at certain times to fulfill requirements of the program you know so they'll basically be 
taking care of you in the very early stages. However, in an unstructured program, your advisor won't have time for this. They will expect you to be very independent and to do things on your own. So if there's any course you need to take that will help you in your research, they wouldn't tell you that you have to attend it. No, you'll be the one on your own to think about and say, okay, I think I need to go for this course. I think I need to go for that course. And you go for those courses, you know. So for example, there was a point I was, I wanted to go for a course on uh, MPIs, you know, message passing interfaces, because I was doing parallel computing, you know, and I didn't have a lot of knowledge on parallel computing coming from Nigeria, you know. So on my own, I had to call a professor at the university and say, hey, professor, do you have one more slot in your class? I'd like to join and learn this stuff. Eventually, I didn't end up going. I ended up learning on my own, you know, from the internet. But the point is that the professor, your, your advisor is not going to organize a particular course for you to develop your knowledge. You have to do it yourself. You have to take initiative. So structured programs, they help you a lot by pulling you and dragging you along. Unstructured programs, you have to be very, very independent. So that's how it is with the, with the, with the PhD positions. So what do you do about funding? So you want to do a PhD, how are you going to get funded for your PhD? Typically, when you come and do a PhD in Europe or in America or any other part of the world, your PhDs are always funded. So that is to say, your advisor will, uh, will not take you unless there's a way that you don't have to pay your fees by yourself. So um, there's two ways for this to happen in Germany. There's what they call a contract. A contract occurs when you, are, you get the admission to a PhD program, structured or unstructured, and your advisor says, okay, you know what, I'm going to fund your PhD through some grants that I received from a funding agency. So based on that, on the grant your advisor has received, a contract will be drawn up between you and the university that states that you are an employee of the university for three or four years and you get paid a salary every single month. This salary will take care of your living expenses and your, your, your basic lifestyle while you're living in Germany. The second way of... Um, doing a PhD or funding your PhD is a scholarship. So there are many scholarship agencies like the German Academic Exchange Service. They give a lot of scholarship to African students to come and do PhD here. There's some other private bodies here, you know. Um, I, I, I've forgotten their names right now, but if you go online, you see lots of lots and lots of them. You know, some of them have requirements. Some of them fund only women. Some of them fund only people from South America or Asia or Africa. Some of them fund people who are doing particular projects like in agriculture or whatever it is. But you have to check online for funding agencies, you know, and finally find one that fits you. The DAA, the German Academic Exchange Service, they fund people in every field regardless of your of, of what you are doing. And again, with, with both of the funding types, they have the advantages and the disadvantages. So, for example, if you're on a scholarship, for example, a scholarship body will be willing to, to pay you your money to travel, like a flight money to go home and see your family. On a contract basis, your contract will not pay you to do that. However, on the other side, a contract will most likely pay you more than, than a scholarship. And a contract, because it's a job, the salary would increase by a few hundred euros every year until the end of your PhD. A scholarship, on the other hand, will not increase. It's going to be the same every year, unless the body, scholarship body sits down and says, okay, you know what, let us increase our scholarship across board for everybody and they increase across board you know but this doesn't happen very often so every kind of funding has advantage advantage and disadvantage you have to just find out what works for you however i think as a person who is interested in doing a phd your concern shouldn't be necessarily how you get funded your concern should be getting funded in the first place so whether it's a contract or a scholarship the most important thing is that you're in germany you're working on what you like and you're advancing your career so once you have your funding secured and you have the position secured, the next thing to do is to negotiate a start date. So what you do is that you and your advisor, you sit down together on Skype, on the phone, and you negotiate with them and say, okay, you know what? I have to apply for a visa. I have to apply for this and that. It's going to take me one month, two months before I come. So you discuss with them, negotiate the start date that's convenient for you. And you come to Germany and you start the PhD. So there's nothing difficult about applying for a PhD in Germany. It's... If you follow all the steps that I've listed here, I think you'll be well on your way to get into a PhD position.